Hey guys, today we're going to talk about network interface bonding. In particular, I have this top server here with two one gig ports, and I want to be able to transfer files off of that server at two gigabits. We're going to go over the configuration today and discuss some of the pros and cons of this setup. So the switch I'm running is a 48 port HPE 2920. I have a large storage server with a 10 gig connection back to the switch, and I have a smaller server producing 100 gigabyte files that need offloaded to the storage server. The smaller server has two one gig ports, as already mentioned, which I'd like to bond for a two gigabit connection back to the switch so those files can be offloaded quicker. So I have here my remote IPMI console. Obviously you don't want to do this from a PuTTY SSH terminal as reconfiguring your network settings will drop your SSH connection. And this server is running Oracle Linux 8.6, pretty much the same as Red Hat Linux as you see here on the prompt. Uh, additionally, the commands and documentation I'll be referencing are from Chapter 9 of the Red Hat 8 Network Configuration Guide, and we'll be using the NMCLI method here. So the very first thing we want to do is make sure you don't have any connection profiles set up. NMCLI device status, you can see both of my network ports, Eno1 and Eno2, are disconnected. If you do have a configuration on either one of these, you'll want to remove it using NMCLI con delete and then the name of your interface in my case it would be eno1 uh, so looking at the red hat documentation here there are a variety of uh, bonding modes you can use uh, the most common is probably going to be 802.3 ad which is an lacp negotiated connection um, we are going to use the round robin balance round robin or mode zero and the reason for that is the round robin balance mode is the only mode that will allow a single TCP IP connection to use the bandwidth of both ports. And it does that by sending packets in a round robin approach or striping them across the interfaces. If we do the 802.3 AD approach, well, that is the more standard and recommended approach for creating a bonded uh, connection between two endpoints. We would have to use multiple TCP IP connections to fully utilize the available bandwidth. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create our new bonded interface. We're going to do nmcli con add type bond if name bond zero bond.options. This is where we're going to set the bonding type. We're going to do mode equals zero. So you can do uh, zero or you can do balanced dash RR. Both are referring to the balanced round robin approach. A connection bond zero successfully added. Do an NMCLI device status. And we can see the bond is created. It's trying to get an IP address, but we haven't given it any physical interfaces yet. So all we need to do is simply add in both of these interfaces as slaves to this bond zero connection. NMCLI con add type ethernet if name eno1 master bond zero so we're saying add the ethernet interface eno1 to the master bond zero and now we can see it's got a connection it says the interface is up 1000 megabit so now we need to add the second interface which was eno2 the rest of the command is exactly the same and we can see the interface has been added successfully and it says link status is definitely up 1000 megabits. So that's a good sign. So now if we do NMCLI device status, you can see we have one bonded interface here and then we have two slave devices, ENO1 and ENO2. So if I do an IP ADDR, we can see our bond zero interface here. It has an IP address of 0.111. And you can see these now share the same MAC address. So we have B872, B872, and then bond zero is also B872. So now if we do ETH tool, bond zero, you can see it says speed 2000 megabits per second. That is perfect, 2000 megabit connection. So now that we have an IP address, we can shift over to the regular PuTTY. Uh, so now we have an rsync command here that's going to copy this 100 gig file from the local file system off to the remote server at uh, 0.20. And you'll see we are copying at 168 megabytes per second, 170, 183. So we're done. This works perfectly, right? Not quite. Uh, so the next step is we need to tell our switch that we are doing a trunked configuration. So I'm now logging into my 2920 switch. Didn't like my password. Well, first, let's show what happens if you don't do the switch configuration step. So let's put that rsync command back in here, okay? And then we'll go back to our switch. So we see that's uploading at 193 megabytes per second. All looks good. So back on our switch, we'll do a show MAC address. 
And we can see the MAC address is on port 43. If we run it again, it's 43. And again, now we have port 41. So what happens is every time the switch receives a packet from that MAC address, it's updating locally which port that MAC address is associated with. So this MAC address is going to keep flopping back and forth between ports 41 and 43. And that's called MAC flap and that will degrade the performance of your network. So to resolve that problem, what we need to do is tell the switch that, hey, we have a bonded interface set up. Now, every switch is going to be different how you do this. This is specific to the HPE and Aruba type switches. So we're going to enter conf T mode and then we do trunk and it wants Ethernet port, so we'll do 41 comma 43, and we're going to call this TRK1. Now there are two modes you can put next. You can see we can do trunk or LACP. Since we established earlier that we are not using LACP on the server side, uh, we need to create a standard trunk or what's referred to as an LAG or lag. And that's just a very basic link aggregation. So now if we do a show trunk, you can see we have TRK1 trunk is on ports 43 and 44. I'm also going to give those ports a name just so I can keep track of what is where. So this is Chia Plotter 1 port 1. And we're going to go to int 43 and we'll do Chia Plotter 1 port 2. So now when we do show trunk, we see our names come up here. We have Chia Plotter 1 port 1 and Chia Plotter 1 port 2 associated with trunk TRK1. And we're going to save our changes here. So now if we go back and run the rsync command again, you can see we're still uploading at our full speed there. And now if we do show mac, mac address, you can see that mac address is associated with our trunk. And you can use this trunk the same way you use a regular ethernet interface. You can assign it a VLAN, you can give it a name, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll also see now if I do a show mac address, on those original two ports, it's no longer going to let me do that because it now says those ports are part of a trunk. All right, so now we're going to talk about some pros and cons of this setup. Uh, and to demonstrate this, we're going to use iPerf, which is a network performance testing tool. So on the right-hand side here, we have the host with a 10 gig connection. On the left-hand side here, we have the host with a two gig connection, our new bonded setup. So on the right-hand server here, I'm going to run iPerf 3-S. And what that's going to do is start a server listening for connections from a client computer. And you see it's listening on port 5201. So on the two gig server here, I'm going to do iperf3 c. So dash c is connect. And we want to connect to 192.168.0.20, which is our 10 gig host. You see it made a connection here and it's now going to run a variety of tests. It's uploading at 1.59 to 1.64 ish megabit, gigabits per second, sorry. So you can see it gave us a rough estimate of 1.6 gigabytes per second. And I do see the numbers are very high in the retry column here. And I do believe that is just because the interface is bottlenecked and it's probably dropping those extra packets. So now let's switch the roles here. Let's run the server. We're going to run that on the system with a two gig connection. And now we're going to run the client on the server with a 10 gig connection. So if we do iperf 3 c 192 no route to host. Oh, you know what? We have to shut the firewall off. Stop firewall D. So now look at this. We are seeing less than one gigabit because it's only using one of those two interfaces. In order to use multiple interfaces, we have to do multiple parallel connections. So if I do dash P5, which is going to run five parallel connections, and we see the sum is still one gigabit because there is one more setting we have not changed yet on this configuration. Uh, so if we go back to our switch here and we do a show trunk again, we see our trunk here with ports 41 and 43, but we see the load balance method is set to L3 or layer three. Most switches out there are not going to do round robin based balancing. They just don't have support for it. Layer three based balancing is pretty much just using the source and destination IP address to determine, you know, it does some sort of hashing or something and determines which interface it wants to send those packets to. We want to change this to layer four based balancing. This particular switch supports either layer three or layer four. And layer four will also take into account the port numbers when it does its hashing function thing and decides which interface to send those packets to. Uh, now this cannot be done on a specific trunk. You have to do this on the switch as a whole. So this is going to change it for all of the uh, trunks you have set up if you have more than one. And the command is trunk 
load balance, and you simply change it to L4 based. So now if we do a show trunk again, you can see it says L4 based load balance. And if we run that test with dash P5 or five parallel connections, you can see we are getting near the full capacity of 1.88 gigabits because it's now taking into account the source and destination port numbers when it does that hashing function to determine which interface to send those packets to. All right, now this is really the only scenario where you would use this particular bonding mode. When you have a source computer with multiple smaller bandwidth interfaces, you can bond those together to upload files from that computer uh, to another computer with a single larger bandwidth interface. You wouldn't really do it the other way around for the reasons I demonstrated with the iPerf3 testing. Uh, our switch does not support the round robin type load balancing method. And if you wanted to transfer files in that direction, the correct way to set up your interface is really to do the LACP method. But again, you will need multiple TCP IP connections to fully utilize that link bandwidth. Uh, so anyway, hopefully this discussion and testing was interesting. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down below. Please hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.